What's up everyone, this is Cole Davis and today we're gonna to talk about dominant chords. So dominant chords can seem challenging because there's so many options, but today I will simplify them for you with four simple triads. Let's get started. So let's take, for example, a C7. Everyone knows a C7, C, E, G, and B flat. Those are the notes in the C7. So what can we put on top of this C7, right? That's the name of the game. If you just play this, well, that might be good enough for two bars of a bass line, but that's not really what we want our solos to sound like. There are four simple triads that you can put on top of this C7 to make it sound really hip and really interesting. So the first triad is D, D major triad. We're gonna put a D major triad on top of the C7. Let's do that again. Let's do that D triad on top of the C7 one more time. All right, and now I'm gonna show you a cool lick that goes with that D major triad over the C7. And we're gonna resolve that lick to the F major seven. C7 resolves to the F major seven. So because I have that triad that I can use now, my understanding of dominant chords is much greater, right? Now is your reminder to subscribe to me on Patreon. On my Patreon today, I have all four triads for every dominant chord along with some cool licks to go along with the dominant chords so you can practice these licks at home. I also have a free copy of the new Samantha a free copy of Scales and Arpeggios, a free copy of my new book, Understanding Thub Position, which has sold 200 copies already. I have two full albums with sheet music included. I have three hours of educational content that you can't find on YouTube or Instagram. I've got a ton of stuff on the Patreon. It's Transcription Tuesday, so I've got a transcription for you every single Tuesday. I've been doing it for like six months now. Subscribe to me on the Patreon. This is your reminder to subscribe to me on the Patreon. Five bucks for a ton of great stuff that you can't find anywhere else. www.patreon.com slash Cole Davis Music. We're almost at 200 patrons. Patreon.com slash Cole Davis Music. Let's try another triad. Let's do another triad over the C7. We have an E flat major triad. Sounds crazy, right? Let's check it out. We got an E flat major triad over a C7. That sounds like why would you play that? But it actually sounds amazing. So let's check it out one more time. And now I'm gonna show you a cool lick with that E flat major triad. So I'm literally just playing the triad, actually. I'm just doing this. So we've got this E flat major triad that we can play over a C7. Right? That sounds insane, but it works so well. Why does it work? It works because the B flat is already in the chord. The G is already in the chord and the E flat is the sharp nine. So we're exposing this sharp nine. It sounds nice even when I just play the chord on bass. Right, we're exposing that sharp nine. It sounds really nice because it rubs against the natural third. So you have the natural third, which is an E, and then the sharp nine above that, which is an E flat or D sharp, depending on how you want to look at it. So that is another triad we can play. There's two more triads. We have an F sharp triad or a G flat triad. Now G flat major triad, who would play a C7 and think, oh, G flat major? Not a lot of people, but it works great. And I'm gonna show you how right now. Let's try it one more time. All 
right, now here's a cool lick with that F sharp major triad. These licks are all available on my Patreon. Why does that sound so good? All of a sudden, our dominant seven vocabulary went from this to we dramatically changed our vocabulary. Why? Because we want other options, right? We don't just want to play one, three, five, seven. And a lot of the time we're afraid to because we don't know what works and we don't know why it works. So this works because the F sharp is the sharp 11, the same note from the D triad, it's the sharp 11, but it's presented in a different context because now we have the sharp 11 with the flat nine. So it's sharp 11 and flat nine, right? Because you got that stretch to make right so you have this interval which works really well in the D triad this F sharp this sharp 11 and it also works well in the F sharp triad or the G flat triad or whatever you want to call it this is a great way to expand your vocabulary there's one more triad and this is actually my favorite triad a flat major the A flat major triad is great because it contains the sharp five, the A flat. It contains the C, which is the root, and it contains the sharp nine. So you're exposing the sharp five and the sharp nine, and you're balancing that with the sturdiness of the root. It's my favorite one. It just sounds so good. This is what we can do with dominant chords. It's so cool and so fresh. I just, I love the way these dissonances sound over the dominant chords, especially when you balance them with the notes that are already in the chord. Dissonance is not about playing out stuff all the time. It's about balancing the wrong notes with the right notes. I talk about this a lot in my lessons. Balancing the wrong notes with the right notes. And that's exactly what we're doing with this. This A flat major triad. That goes so well over a C7 because you're balancing the dissonance with that root, that strong C in the middle of the A flat triad. Let's try the lick one more time. It's pretty simple, but if you add this to your playing, you will start to see a whole new way of playing dominant chords. And for the rest of the licks, and for the four dominant triads over each chord, subscribe to me on Patreon. I've got a PDF for today that you can only find on Patreon that outlines this clearly so you can take it home and practice it there. www.patreon.com slash Cole Davis Music. Thank you so much for watching. For more content like this, subscribe to my YouTube channel, or subscribe to me on Patreon, or sign up for the lesson waitlist below. CDL.